Yo, what's up guys? My name is Hacky, and in this video, I'm going to show you some cool tricks that you probably didn't know about in GTA. Comment down below if you want me to make this into a little series. I'd be happy to do that. Now, just before we begin the video, if it goes on to help you out, take a second to drop a like on it. That'd be awesome. Also, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and drop a sub because you do not want to miss any more videos like these. Join the Hacky Army. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell as well. Real quick, if you're in need of any of these GTA Online services, check out the top link of the description. And don't forget to use discount code Hacky for 5% off at checkout. Also stop by the new giveaway site for some awesome prizes like Xbox Series X's, PS5's and much more. Anyway though, let's get back into the video. So the first trick is how you can spectate other players getting mugged or getting mercenaries called on them from the comfort of your own apartment. If you didn't know, you can actually spectate other players in your session watching TV and after calling mercenaries or a mugger on someone, it's a lot better being able to watch it happen and you're not in any kind of danger, you're just sitting in your apartment or office or whatever property you're watching TV on. So what I would do is I'd switch to the spectate channel since it takes a little bit of time to load into it. At least it does for me. It takes a little bit of time to load into that channel. I basically just turn on the TV and then I move my left stick to the right until I get to the spectate channel. And then you can flip through the players and see whatever they're doing and then just pick whichever one you want to mug or call mercenaries on. And then after you've chosen that player, just back out of it, pull up your phone and call a mugger if you want to mug them and select whatever player you want to mug and then quickly pull up the TV and you guys will see them get mugged or the dude having to start fighting a bunch of mercenaries. It's pretty badass I gotta say because you're just relaxing sitting on the couch in your apartment while he's getting mugged or fighting mercenaries outside and you're just casually watching him on TV suffering or just struggling outside fighting people. It's a bit evil but pretty badass as well. Might as well get yourself a hot chocolate and some popcorn while you're at it. And I mean up until not too long ago I didn't even know you can spectate other players in the session on TV in your apartment or office. That's a pretty cool feature I gotta say. It would also be very useful if someone's waiting outside your apartment or office just waiting for you to come out and then you'd know exactly where they are and what they're doing. So overall this makes calling a mugger or calling mercenaries on someone a bit more enjoyable because actually watching these things happen from the comfort of your own couch makes it a whole lot better. In this next one I'm going to show you how you can break instantly no matter how fast you're going in a car. Whether you're drag racing and you reach the end of the track or you just need to instantly break for whatever reason this is going to be really helpful for you. So all we're going to do once we're at top speed or actually any speed you want just hold down on the d-pad and select one of the story mode characters and then just switch to any one of the story mode characters as you normally would while holding the gas button then once you're at the alert asking you if you're sure you want to do this just back out of that and then you guys will see you are completely still and so it basically instantly froze your car in place and now you can keep on driving around and it's not like you were driving at full speed it doesn't matter if you were going at 200 miles per hour or 10 miles per hour it is going to completely stop your car in place so for scenarios where you're going way too fast and you're about to crash into a wall or something, this would be pretty helpful for it. Or if someone's chasing you and you both are going at full speed, this could brake check him like crazy. I guess if you're trying to juke him out and get away from him, this would be a pretty good thing for it. Or once again, for whatever you might need it for. So this next one is going to be a wall breach. I don't really do too many wall breaches, but this is actually a pretty cool one. So what you guys want to do, head to this exact location on the map. It's in like the hills area. I think it's called Vinewood Hills. It's pretty close to the Vinewood sign. So you guys want to head to this exact house to the entrance of it, climb over the wall left of the gate, and then go back to like the edge where there's the wall and the bush. And you guys will see you should be able to enter the bush and then you guys are inside the bush. That's what she said. You're going to see you're able to go all the way to the other end of the bush. It's a pretty long one. That's what she said once again. Now you can pull out weapons, but you're not exactly able to shoot in most places. Your weapon's going to be up against your chest like you're up against a wall. So basically you're not able to aim at least in the position I was. I recommend you go and try this out yourself and see if you can aim it at anything and shoot outside and see if people can shoot inside as well. I'd be interested to see if you can take a friend and then see if he can shoot you while you're inside the bush or not exactly a bush maybe more of a hedge and when you're inside you're gonna notice your arm or your foot are gonna pop out which is completely fine but the thing is if you go fully outside you're not gonna be able to go back in you actually have to do the thing again and so you basically go out of the hedge and then you can't go back in it you have to go back to the gate and start over although it's pretty easy to do I mean this wall breach is really easy so feel free to try it out mess around with it a bit have some fun with friends for this next one i'm going to show you how you can recover an impounded vehicle without having to drive all the way to the police station so all you're going to need to do for this obviously you want to have an impounded vehicle i just went ahead and actually purposely impounded a vehicle for this and just before you do this we actually need an office but i mean most people have an office in gta that's like one of the main things to own in gta so hopefully you're in the majority that has an office now once you have an office you're able to call an assistant 
So open up your phone, go into the contacts and call your assistant and you guys will see an option to recover your impounded vehicle. I know it's super simple and you'd be surprised a lot of people actually don't know about this option. And especially if you're not even close to the police station, if you're all the way up in Polito Bay or Sandy Shores, this is going to be super useful. And not only is it going to recover your vehicle from the impound, it's also going to spawn it right next to you, just like calling up the mechanic. This trick could be really convenient, once again, especially if you're far away from the police station. And it does cost a thousand bucks, but I mean, that's pretty much nothing. Unless you're the brokest of broke and you have like 2,000 bucks total, a thousand bucks should really be nothing, and it's actually completely worth it, I think. Let's just say 99.9% .9 of people can afford something that costs a thousand bucks in GTA Online. And speaking of broke people in GTA, this one's going to be for the very, very, very broke people in GTA Online. I guess it's not only for broke people, I guess anyone could do it, but I mean, this is specifically going to help out broke people. And so that's going to be using public transportation in GTA Online, specifically the subway. I mean, public transportation is free in GTA Online, and if you have no car or no fast car, no actual good vehicle to get around the city, the public transportation is actually a good alternative. And it's actually not only for people that don't have a good vehicle to get around the map with, it's actually the safest way to get around the city. Because if you guys don't know, there's something called the oppressor and the laser and so many different weaponized vehicles that make it pretty dangerous to go around the city in GTA Online. And the subway is actually the safest vehicle. I mean, it's underground. And when you think about it now, the underground subway is actually the safest way to get around the city. It's way safer than roads and in there because I mean, you have jets, you have helicopters, you have oppressors, and you can get locked onto pretty easily. And you never really see these things in underground subways. And plus, even if an oppressor does chase you underground, you're in an invisible subway. If you didn't know, these subways are invisible. You can't blow them up whatsoever. No matter what you shoot at it, it's just going to keep on moving normally. And another thing this could be useful for, if you need to go AFK for a little bit, you could just go in the subway and you're just going to keep on moving with it. You don't need to do anything. And I guess it's a good way to not get kicked out of a session. So actually, I'd say this is not only for broke people. It could be useful for several different things. The next one's another convenient one. So for the most part, it doesn't matter where you are on the map. You can spawn this useful vehicle in. Let's say you find yourself in the middle of nowhere and you need some sort of vehicle to get out of there and go to wherever you want quick. This is the fastest way to call in this vehicle and probably the best vehicle to get around the map with, or at least one of the fastest vehicles in the game. You do need to have a submarine with this, but once you have the submarine, you get this really fast and useful helicopter with it as well. So what you want to do for this, anytime, anywhere, pull up the interaction menu, go down to services, go into Kosaka, which is the submarine, and then go down to Sparrow, and you'll see an option to request it, and after like half a second, it'll spawn in. It spawns in really fast and usually really close to you as well, and it's a super fast helicopter. It's pretty lightweight as well. I mean, it spawns in really close to you, and it's really fast to go around the map with. I think it's super convenient. Another really simple and easy trick. Hopefully, it does go on to help you guys out, but I hope this whole video went on to help you out. If it did, drop a like on it. Subscribe if you guys are new. Turn on the notification bell as well. Anyway, though, this has been Hacky. Have a good rest of your day. I'll see you guys in the next video, and peace.